Uh, SCJ, I, I see that you have extended a courtesy to President Ramaphosa because the commission is the commission of the president and uh, the office established the commission and was President Zuma. Was the same courtesy extended to the former president? Where you go, like you did with the current president? In terms of warm bodies, it's President Zuma who established the commission. Long before all the shenanigans started, the same way, the polite way, you went to the president, you talk to him, you show him whatever, then in the process you say you must come and also testify. Have you tried doing the same thing with President Zuma? President Zuma, that you may not be the president today, but uh, that issue that you left us with is unfolding, is doing very well. At some point, we'll want to have you there uh, coming to testify. Because I don't know what was the, uh, the, the, the arrangement or the environment between you and the current president. But KTC would mean that, you know, that warm type of an approach, a brotherly approach to say, well, we are here, and then at some point, please come and do the honorable thing. Uh, well, I didn't have a meeting with uh, President Zuma, uh, but remember that the current president was, because he was the president, mm -hmm. I would meet him from time to time to tell him what was happening in the commission in terms of uh, if there were challenges or if there was to be an extension. So it was one of those occasions when I, I told him. With regard to President Zuma, uh, I, I think I will wrote a letter to him uh, or to his lawyers. Uh, I can't remember whether first to him or to his lawyers straight away. And, uh, and uh, invited him to come and give evidence. He took quite some time before he made up his mind whether he was going to come or not. Ultimately, he agreed to come. But uh, I can't remember whether after he had agreed or before he agreed, he raised an issue and said, uh, in terms of what rule was I inviting him to come? Um, and I think uh, my response was that this was a courtesy. Uh, we were not uh, necessarily going to issue a summons. Uh, uh, it was a courtesy. When he did come, he still made an issue about the fact that I had extended the courtesy and not said um, there should be a subpoena. I had simply written a letter. They made an issue. It was on TV. Uh, so uh, they made me get the impression that uh, they did not want me to act in any way other than in terms of the rules. Um, uh, but I had taken the view that I should uh, do that ex ex courtesy to him. Uh, I, I didn't know that he wasn't going to like it. You have been to President Zuma's apartments or hotel rooms in Durban more than twice in our, through your own statement that you issued uh, or read in the... Please just repeat, I didn't hear. You have been to President Zuma's hotel in Durban mm -hmm. more than twice. That's the account you gave in the statement that... Uh, you read during the recusal uh, mm. application on his invitation? Mm. Well, I, I know that I, I remember one time, I don't know if it's twice, I didn't refresh my memory on the, on the, on the, on the statement, but uh, if you say that's what it says, then it must be so. Yes, and then it was when you, are a, you were a judge, and then President Zuma invites you to his hotel room twice, or more than that, and then you go. What were, why was he inviting you? What were the issues? Uh, well, I haven't... Uh, does, does the statement say it was a time when I was a judge? Maybe. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, uh, let me put it this way. We, we knew each other, uh, Mr. Zuma and I. So I, I think he called or I got a message that he would like to see me. 
there was, as far as I'm concerned, no reason why I shouldn't uh, agree to see him. I went to see him. But, uh, I, well, one, I can't remember, because that was much later, I can't remember what the issues may have been on, on that occasion. That was quite a long time ago. No, uh, acting CJ, as a judge called by such a prominent politician to his hotel room, mm. um, it, it, it can't be a matter that you can easily forget. It's a memorable thing. I mean, I remember the day I met Mandela at his house. He said to me, if you want to lead society, you have to cut your stomach. It's too big for a youth <laughs> president to be a president with a big stomach. Uh, and uh, I had to make initiatives to meet that uh, demand. So it's a memorable thing. I can't forget that. You can ask me of any prominent person I met when I was young. I remember that. There's well, no way I'm going to accept that explanation. Well, well uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Malema, I may have remembered if I was meeting Man President Mandela, uh, Pre uh, President Zuma, I knew him. We had known each other. Uh, as I say, it might have been it might have been more than 20 years ago when uh, that particular uh, 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 meeting happened. Then you went to meet Zuma, President Zuma again at his. Uh, uh, there was one time when I also asked to, for a meeting with him about the 13th or 14 years ago, when he was still out of government, and I met him in his forest town house in Johannesburg. On that occasion, I, I, I wasted to raise with him a matter that I considered of public importance. That was at his house in forest town. What yes. is this matter of public interest? Yes, no, that, that I can tell you what, what it was, firstly because I remember it, but also because uh, I had a look at his affidavit in response to that statement, and uh, I know that uh, based on what he said in his response, uh, he would not be taking a view that uh, I should not say what that matter was. Uh, in a different uh, situation, I might have been concerned whether if I went and had a private meeting with somebody, uh, I would have to then say what we discussed in private. But because he has taken uh, uh, the view which I understood to be that uh, uh, he doesn't mind if I mention it, then I'm going to mention it. Uh, this was, I think it was, I think it may have been 2008. Unfortunately, I, I uh, didn't get a chance to check uh, newspapers so I could uh, refresh my memory. What had happened is that uh, there had been some event or function where both you, Commissioner Malema, and Zuma were together uh, somewhere. And uh, you spoke at that uh, ev ev event. Uh, might have been, uh, I don't know if it was a media conference or whatever, I have no recollection. But you spoke, and uh, I think he was sitting next to you. And uh, if I recall correctly, that's the occasion when you said you were prepared to kill for him. Uh, I was concerned about uh, that statement insofar as it could bring uh, violence in the country, particularly in terms of the uh, atmosphere at that time. Uh, it troubled me, but I was more troubled by the fact that when he stood up to speak, he did not say anything to, to
to you to indicate that uh, this was not right to talk about uh, killing for somebody uh, in the context of uh, whatever the issues were. Uh, after, some, for, after some days, uh, I thought, well, I know him. Uh, what if this could end up leading to quite some violence? Uh, maybe I should uh, ask him if I can see him and talk about my concern. I made arrangements and he agreed. I went to see him. I told him that I was very concerned because uh, the regions, provinces, you know, even a country could be thrown into a lot of violence uh, if leaders do not uh, speak to their supporters and uh, dissuade them from uh, making any statements uh, about violence. I talked talk to him about the violence that we in KwaZulu-Natal had, had had, which he knew. Uh, I think I may have spoken to him about violence in other countries. And uh, I, I indicated that uh, I was concerned about it as a citizen. Uh, I was concerned in case uh, we ended up with violence. I thought that he should have uh, spoken to you. Uh, he listened to me and uh, I give him credit. He, he understood, but my recollection is that uh, uh, he said uh, he had not spoken to you in public, but he spoke to you in, in private. That's my recollection. I was simply concerned about the, uh, the possibility of violence. I knew that uh, that was the case, and I viewed that as a, a pure political interference by a judge, because that was a statement made in a political rally. And uh, you left, you went to meet President Zuma, to discuss my political position as a judge. And you proceeded to sit on matters where the organization I lead, and I looked at you, the organization I lead came to litigate against President Zuma. You have never indicated to court that you knew President Zuma like that, to a point where you can even discuss political issues with him. On two court cases that we brought before the Constitutional Court, you said there, never declared like everybody declares here that they know you in this way or that way. You never said, one of the respondents in this case, I know him like this to a point where I had a political discussion with him about the leader of this political party. Don't you think that that was unethical for you to one, to go and discuss a political statement with a politician as a sitting judge, two, to go and listen to court cases involving that, the two politicians without declaring that you know the other side of uh, uh, the, the case? Well, no, I don't share that view, Commissioner Malema. This was, about, this was a concern about a statement made by you at the time uh, at, at the age at which you were. As a citizen, I was concerned, and, um, and uh, um, it didn't mean that uh, I had nothing against you. My concern was that he should have uh, uh, dealt with the matter in a certain way because we should not have violence. And uh, I've never, I, I, I didn't have anything against you, so. I wasn't going to be conflicted, I don't know how many years later, in hearing a matter involving an organization that you formed many years later. Uh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, going to be conflicted at all. 
But uh, uh, ACJ, here is a story that you go and discuss another politician with another politician, and later on, it comes out that this judge who's sitting here has got strong views about you. And he sits here to listen to an affidavit that is signed by you. Uh, you are the face of this case. Don't you think that it is actually not in the best interest of the judiciary and the, for the judges to go and discuss other politicians? Because if you're bringing age at the age I was, it's immaterial to me. I'm a politician, I'm a president of a, an organization even at that time. I was not a, 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 a leader of a crutch. I was a political leader of an organization with a rich history in this country. And for you to go as a judge to discuss another politician with another politician, that amounts to bringing the judiciary into disrepute. Because now when it comes out is, this judge holds an extremely extreme political views about you. It doesn't matter how many years after. And when we say, why, how? No, he drove all the way to come and talk about you, and he was a sitting judge. Is that not, does that help to enhance the good image of the judiciary, or in what way does it help to improve the good standing of the judiciary in society? I, I don't uh, think it, has, it creates a problem at all, Commissioner Malema. I think as a citizen, I am entitled, if violence maybe is threatened and uh, I know somebody who can uh, do something to prevent people being killed and so on. I think I'm entitled, even if I'm a judge, if I know that person, I'm entitled to go that, to that person and say, please, we don't want violence. If there is violence, ordinary people will suffer, will be killed, and uh, of course they might not agree, but I think as a citizen, um, I, I'm entitled to, to do that. And I've never he held any strong views uh, against you, Commissioner Malema, political or otherwise. Um, actually, uh, I have respect for you. So I've never had any uh, strong views uh, uh, against you. Uh, you have a certain way of dealing with issues, a certain way of dealing with matters. Sometimes some people don't like it. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ACJ. I, I've got a, a very serious problem when I raise issues and I get to be loved by everyone. I'm not money. I will never be loved by everyone. And those who brought me up politically were never loved by everyone. Fought for this country got ill-treated to their graves. So I'm not in a business of trying to impress everybody. I'm here to pursue that which I think is right. Others will be happy, others won't be happy. It is their own baby to feed Malta Bella. I'm, I'm not in that business. Now, I want to go back to the earlier thing of meeting President Zuma in the hotel. This had to be so because we will normally interact then, interact when we meet at the opening of parliament of, or other government or state functions. However, there were two or so occasions when Mr. Zuma was not in government, when I asked for a meeting with and I agreed to. When he asked for a meeting with and I agreed to him, I think that, I think that this, would be, this would have been somewhere between 2005 and 2007. He was staying in a hotel in Deben and I met him. There was one time when I was also asked for a meeting with him about 13 or 14 years ago when I was still out of government. This is what we spoke about. So you remember that you met him between this and that in a hotel in Deben twice. I, 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 I accept that Zuma is not Mandela, but when you come from KZN, Zuma is the Mandela of KZN. 
That's why you even speak about the role he played in dealing with violence in KZN. There is no way you can be called by President Zuma twice in a hotel. You remember the years? You remember that it was in a hotel? You remember he was not in government? You don't remember what you were discussing with President Zuma at that time? I know, but there is a rule here that you don't give people, you don't raise issues that we didn't raise with you before. But you, on your own volition, please, ACJ, take the country into confidence. President Zuma asked to see you twice in a hotel. You agreed to go and meet him, and you remember all of those details. The only detail in two meetings you don't remember is what, why President Zuma wanted to meet you. Well, I certainly don't remember uh, them, uh, Commissioner Malema. The one that I remember, I've told you, I've told the Commission, the one that I remember. Uh, SCJ, I'm worried that it, it becomes very easy for you to descend into the political arena. One is these meetings that you had with President Zuma to discuss politics. Two is these meetings that you have with ease with President Ramaphosa uh, to discuss this and even go beyond of discussing how he's going to appear uh, and all of that. And anyone who says Ramaphosa's appearance was staged, I'm tempted to agree with them because you met him before and then you now have a press conference to engage politicians in public descending into the arena. Are we going to have a, a, a chief justice that gets easily available to meet politicians at, the, at their own comfort? We don't know what gets to be discussed there and when we ask, they don't remember. Will that not even put this judiciary in a more crisis than it is now because research has been presented here that people are losing confidence in the judiciary. With an ACJ that visits politicians with ease, I mean, I heard others saying it's easy for you uh, to call a minister and all of that. Th those things of ministers are insignificant. Man. We're talking presidents here, so we're not talking those ministers, this and that. Presidents. Where's those that are implicated in what you are presiding over. You meet them with ease. You discuss with them with ease. It shouldn't be easy for any judge. That's my view. To be available to meet a politician. And it shouldn't be easy for any politician to be available to meet any judge unless they are prepared when that matter is exposed to disclose publicly with ease what was the meeting about. I'm living here with discomfort that you are a sitting judge, you met a high profile politician in a hotel twice. You remember all the details, the only thing that cannot be remembered is what was discussed. I don't think that helps to get you to be the CJ of our country if such small details cannot be remembered. Commissioner Malema, I think you have made your point. Acting Chief Justice admits to having had those meetings, but cannot remember exactly what was discussed at those meetings. He explains why he had to see the president of the country on official business, as I understood him, about the work of the commission established by the current president's predecessor. I think you, you have made your, your, your point. If there is anything to be said about this matter, it can be said during our deliberations. I accept that, uh, Chair.